Welcome to another edition of DXB Today, where, well, tonight we're taking a bit of a deep dive into, well, what is the elixir of eternal youth? Well, not just that. How do you prolong a healthier and longer life? We are going to be taking medical advice. We're going to be talking to a world-renowned therapist. There might even be a bit of exercise. Let's see what's coming up on the show tonight. I'm going to check out Dr. Vinod's Parkinson's Centre to find out how gene testing can help in prevention of the disease. We meet CJ Mahutra, the founder of the first biohacking and anti-aging centric company in the region. And our very Nimi caught up with Bollywood actress, the one and only Karina Kapoor, to know all about her complete book to pregnancy. And not only that, we're also getting very involved with the Dubai Fitness Challenge uh, with a calming yoga routine. Calming? Yeah, maybe. We'll wait and see. That's coming towards the end of the show. So here we all are um, in what promises to be a fascinating episode for us this evening. Indeed. It's very nice to be back together again. The last time we were together was the space launch. Do you remember that? That was, yes. Very long. 1998. <laughs> <laughs> back then, way back then. The aim wasn't even born, mate, yeah. that's for sure. Um, so listen, uh, tonight's show is interesting because, you know, we've all lived in this extraordinary city for quite a while, and there is a huge amount of investment in image here. Image means a lot. And I find this a fascinating uh, topic because of all the sort of areas of medicine, of health, of wellness, certainly this idea of eternal youth, which of course is something that everyone strives for to a certain degree, is something that's been invested, but it's, 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 it's rapidly evolving at the moment. It has become such a huge industry. And that's what I'm finding fascinating about tonight is that we're looking at it from so many different angles. Yes, definitely. I mean, biohacking, which we were just briefly talking about before, is like oh, Well, a you've huge... been very kind there. You explained it to me. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I explained it to you. But it's like a huge buzzword at the moment. Everybody's into biohacking. Everybody wants to be young. Everyone wants to live longer, which is the idea behind biohacking. Guys, have you heard much about it? Is it something that you're interested in? Well, but this is the thing. When it comes down to actual biohacking and something that you touched on there, mate, was aesthetically on the outside, we, we see things, but we've got to think about the inside, man. If you want to live a bit longer, you've got to know what's happening in the inside and, and try and help and push that forward to live a lot longer. Um, so that is something that is um, it's quite dear to me, actually. I've been looking into it quite a lot. I think um, the other thing that, 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 that sort of strikes me is that when you look at a lot of this, and we're going to look at it, you know, we're looking at technical advances, we're looking at how uh, the, 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 the understanding of science and medicine mm. is moving forward, we're looking at what you put in your body, what you put, what, how you go about it. But at the core of a lot of it is the old adage of prevention is better than cure, isn't it? And Definitely. Making lifestyle changes early on or recognising those changes could pay dividends moving forward. It definitely. Now, when I was doing a little bit of research, about biohacking, yeah, I came across yeah, yeah. something oh, yeah. by Dr. Ezekiel Emmanuel, who hypothesizes that male biohackers in their 40s and 50s are motivated by fear and ego. So I'm just wondering if, if you've got any <laughs> info on that. What Apparently, two scared egos over there's, here. A, there's a real threat to masculinity at this age. Well, what do you think about that, guys? Um, Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, mate, I've, look, we're, we're fathers, so we've, we've done all what we need to do. We've proved what we need to prove. <laughs> I mean, it's speaking candidly, yeah, there is. I mean, uh, and I know that it, you get, it gets called so many different things, the midlife crisis, yes. um, that sort of moment when you, you, you look in the mirror and say, like, things need to change. And there definitely is an element of that. It's just a question of ownership. And I like to think that... Uh, Leno's owning his grey hair on his beard. I'm owning my grey hair on my head, etc. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be making changes or certainly be open to those changes. Exactly. Well. And I mean, as a woman, we are just constantly running away from ageing. So that's uh, something that we're all trained and programmed to do from a young age. So I think accepting it and trying to work more towards like a healthier lifestyle, longer life is probably the better than it, just uh, covering everything yeah, up. Yeah, I think it goes back to that original point we we're making is that you know, much more than any other parts of the world, there is a bigger focus on it here because of the sort of drive towards image. Whether that's right or wrong remains to be seen. Anyway, thankfully it's not just us discussing this uh, here this evening over the course of the next hour. Lena? Yes indeed, Tom. Let's find out who our guest co-host is for tonight. Hey, I'm Marissa Peer, founder of Rapid Transformational Therapy. I can't wait to meet you in the studio. Marissa will be joining us right here in the hot seat in just a second. But first, 
I went down to meet Dr. Vinod Mehta, the founder of the UAE Parkinson's Association, to find out more about their Emirati Parkinson's genome campaign. So let's take a look. Today we're shining a spotlight on a inspiring initiative, Parkinson's Awareness. And our guide through this journey is none other than Dr. Vinod, who is a specialist in this field. So joining me now is Dr. Vinod Mehta. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really interested to know about all of your studies. First of all, I want to ask, what is Parkinson's? The brain produces a very important hormone or chemical, what you call a neurotransmitter, called dopamine. So the dopamine controls every movement of your body. So as you age gracefully, then you lose normally the petrol, the dopamine in the brain, which cause problem with your movement. Either your movement becomes slow or started shaking or you can't move. So that's what we call as Parkinson's disease. So how do you get to people to come in and actually do the genetic testing? Right. For, for example, you've seen a Baba here. So he's one of my favorite patients from all in and uh, the families are based in the tribal communities. He has Parkinson's last five, 10 years. It started with a tremor in the lower limb. Parkinson's is a very treatable condition, although it's not curable, it's a highly treatable condition if you can catch it at early stage. In United Arab Emirates, I'm very privileged that I have met some great people here. We formed what we call as Parkinson's Community Association UAE, where you met some, several people. Now they are talking themselves, they are talking to them, saying that in UK we have this new treatment, in America we have this new treatment. In Dubai, you have every treatment here, an amazing country, i will say that, but if you, unless you ask the doctor, you won't get it. So I would say that empower yourselves and you need to ask what's the new on the market. Fantastic. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Doctor, for talking to us and also creating more awareness around Parkinson's. Thank you. We truly thank you. Thanks, thank, thank you. So I'm now joined by some of the patients of Dr. Vinod Mehta who are going to share with me their personal accounts of their treatment. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I just wanted to ask, can you tell me your experience of wearing the watch and what a difference it's made to you? I call this as one of those devices which will empower patients. Mm -hmm. So the patient does not need to come and tell the doctor everything. The doctor would know that when the medicine was taken, how well the medicine worked and the tremors which the patient has and will help people of determination with Parkinson's in the United Arab Emirates. So to determine uh, Parkinson's disease, there's obviously got to be genetic testing prior to that. Can you talk to me a little bit about the genetic testing? Mm -hmm. The genetic testing is very important to discover uh, the Parkinson's disease at the early stages. For example, there might be someone who has a Parkinson's disease, but he, feels, he doesn't, feel, doesn't have any symptoms. By doing the genetic test, he will discover that he has uh, I have as a Parkinson's disease. By that one, he will uh, prevent any any abnormal symptoms that will maybe uh, happen in the future. So, could you give me a female perspective on this and how important genetic testing is? Yes, from my side, my mom sh she's very young and she have uh, Parkinson, so it's very important to come and give a sample. Early detection of Parkinson's will help in defeating the disease. It's gonna help the doctors, it's gonna help the patients get their lives transformed as soon as possible. And at the same time, it's gonna make the community, an active community, a better community. We will have other people who will be there to support. But at the same time, unless it is detected, unless it is diagnosed, there isn't anything that the doctors can do. So I, from this platform, would like to encourage all the Emirati patients to come forward, give their samples, get it tested, so that we can find what's the reason of Parkinson's here in the United Arab Emirates. It's gonna make the future generation better. It's gonna make the future generation live a healthy, a better life.
right now our guest co-host today is a rtt trainer uh, changing people's lives by helping them reach their true potential her simple and effective techniques and mantra uh, and of course self hypnosis program have shaped her to be one of the most sought after and recognized names in the well-being industry it's an absolute very privilege to welcome into the studio world-renowned therapist and best-selling author marissa peer marissa thank you so much indeed for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to be here. It's great to have you here in Dubai. It's great to hear that you're spending a bit more time here in Dubai yeah. as well. And I mean, just for the benefits um, of our viewers here this evening, for those that are tuning in and going, okay, first up, what's RTT? How do you explain it to the uninitiated? So it's, well, RTT means rapid transformational therapy, and I've been a therapist my entire adult life, and I never understood why it had to be slow. I always thought, isn't that funny? Every healing modality, going to the dentist, the doctor, the chiropractor, is, they offer you immediate relief, except for therapy, which says, oh no, it's going to be long and arduous. And I thought, well, surely that all therapies should be the same. They should offer you relief from physical pain, emotional pain, whether the pain is because you get migraines or the pain is because you can't find love or you lack confidence or you have low self-esteem. So I really got a lot of feedback from my own clients over many, many years and created a therapy that was powerful, but really fast. You need one to three sessions, that's it. And it can change everything. Mm. In terms of the, the, the better understanding of the therapy as well. I mean, you've worked in some of the, the, the major capitals around yeah, the world. Um, you're doing a lot more work here in Dubai at the moment. Is, is, Dubai, is Dubai ready for RTT or has it fully accepted it already? I think actually Dubai is, is really very into now mental health. You know, we've been into physical health for a long time, working out, not eating sugar, all that stuff. But I think, you know, we're just beginning to understand that we're a mind and a body and you can do all the physical health in the world and all the juicing. But if you have low self-esteem, low confidence, don't feel good enough, don't feel worthy, it doesn't really make any difference. I mean, we see people all the time, so, someone like George Michael, someone like... Uh, Whitney Houston, who have everything except if you don't have the, the self-value, the feeling that you're enough, you really don't have anything. Mm. I mean, we just saw that last week with Matthew Perry. Mm. It doesn't matter what you've got, if you haven't got good mental health and a high sense of I'm lovable, I'm enough, I'm worthy, then actually you haven't got anything. Now, how can individuals incorporate your I am enough philosophy into their everyday lives? So you might notice I wear I am enough bracelets. Oh, I've incredible. had them on for so long, they're fading away. What you need to do is, it's not enough to put it on a poster and stick it on your fridge. You sort of need to, every day to say it, stay to affirm and embody it. So when you're in the shower, there's nothing much to do in there except say, oh, I love the smell of this soap. And because the water's coming down, it's quite a meditative state and it's a perfect time to say, I'm enough, I matter, I'm significant, I'm lovable, I have something amazing to offer the world. You might go, that's all silly, but it doesn't matter. And if it feels silly, some people say, I feel really annoyed when I say that because it's not true. Well, that's a good sign. The mind learns by repetition, keep doing it very, very quickly. It stops doing what you do and it becomes who you are. So you just have to find some time, back of an Uber when the kettle is boiling, to just say, I'm enough. I've always been enough, I'll always be enough. And if you want to quantify it, say I'm enough because I'm enough. I matter because I matter. I'm lovable because I'm lovable. I have something to offer the world, even if you don't know what it is. You see, the only way to massively raise your self-esteem is through praise and more praise. Praise elevates your self-esteem. Criticism diminishes it. And funnily enough, your own praise elevates it faster and your own criticism diminishes it faster. Because if I said to you, oh, I love that dress, can I borrow it? I've completely manipulated you with praise. Mm -hmm. But, and the mind knows that, but also with criticism, that other people have an agenda. But when it's your own thoughts, he thinks that well, there's no agenda because it's you talking about you, so it must be real. So every day your mind is working, it, every thought you think is a blueprint that your mind is working to make real. Mm. That's why people say, you know, if I look at a cake, I get fat. Oh, I, I get tears in my eyes just watching kittens being rescued. Or when I think about food, my stomach rumbles. When you think of something embarrassing, you, you go bright red. And therefore, we already know that happens every day. We think a thought, we make it real. So we have to learn to think better thoughts, simple, but also powerful. You know, it's not enough to say every day and every way I'm getting better and better, because that's so ambiguous. You have to say things like, I'm magnetically lovable. I'm really brilliant at IT. I'm so good, I'm a phenomenal parent. 
I'm a great friend. You, you got, your job is to turn your mind on with words that are super descriptive, and even put words in front of them, like, I'm okay, is what I call fluff. That is, yeah. But you, if you say, I'm incredibly okay, massively okay, in fact, I'm really gifted at IT, or I'm amazing, at, I've got Specifying. great people skills. Yeah, just say it, you know. What we tend to do is we tend to think, well, I'm gonna give you the job of making me feel good. I'm gonna give you the job, am I okay? Do you like me? Did I, do I do that right? And you should never do that. Do not give someone agency. Yeah, you've if got you're to have looking, that responsible. Yeah, if you're looking out there for how you feel about yourself, you'll never find You've got to go in here yeah. and say, I'm doing a great job. And of course, in the days now when most, many people of us work from home, we didn't even have a boss saying, you did a really good job today. I was really impressed. So our praise muscle is just withering away. Okay. So if you work for yourself, even where you've got to say, wow, today, the stuff that came out of my mouth, I was on fire, or <laughs> I was really kind, or I, I went the extra mile. Remember, there is nothing that will boost you faster than self, faster than praise. And you know, nobody's told people that the job of a teacher and the job of a parent is to raise kids' self-esteem. Yeah. That's the job of a school, but they're not doing it. Yeah. Marissa, um, the tone of your voice is so calming. We could do this for several hours <laughs> at the moment. Um, unfortunately, we've got about 400 guests waiting to come on at the moment. So you are going to stay with us as our yeah, guest co-host, yes. which is great. And I think we've just literally scratched the surface of the potential of mind and body at the moment. So thanks again for staying with us. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, well, after the break, we're going to get in conversation with a founder of Beauty Treats. And apparently, she's got some of her collagen cookies for us to try. Stay with us. Oh, wow.